I call a special meeting of the City Council for the purpose of the State of the City Address to Order. Today I'd like to welcome Pastor, Senior Pastor Keith Loy from Celebrate Church here in Sioux Falls for the invocation. And after the invocation, if you just please uh, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. So at this time I ask everyone to please rise. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it would only be appropriate that we first acknowledge you for being God. As Scripture assures us, you are the one who was and is and forever will be. Lord, I struggle sometimes on how to express our gratitude for all that you've given us and provided for us, your goodness, your grace, your mercies. But we say thanks. Lord, gathered in this room are our leaders, men and women positioned for the good. As Paul wrote to Timothy, it's an awesome thing that one should ascribe to becoming an overseer. A title, as you know, that requires a great sense of industry and responsibility. So, Father, I thank you for what you birthed in their hearts and now has grown to fruition as they've accepted the challenge to lead this fair city. I pray for a hedge of protection around them as they labor in decision and with the resources for what is best for Sioux Falls. I trust that you will continually remind them that you are always for them and never against them. Lord, as they work together, I pray that they will always recall the words that were written in Proverbs, to not lean upon their own understanding, but in all our ways, or to acknowledge you. Lord, I pray that you would forgive us when we've attempted to use our positions as a platform <clears throat> of political persuasion. Lord, that you would forgive us when we abuse it to leverage power or control. Lord, I pray that you would help us to lead for only an audience of one. And when a term should come to an end, that we should hear from you, well done, my good and faithful servant. Lord, I pray for our mayor, your leader for such a time as this, I thank you for his leadership as well as our growing friendship. And I would ask that you would protect him as he faces the challenges of tomorrow. And I pray that you would guide him in your wisdom and shower him with your grace. Lord, I want to thank you for making our city a city of diversity, a beautiful portrait of your divine nature. And Lord, it's precisely in this diversity that you have called us to govern, that we should not be divided, but in our differences, we're to remain as one. As that old adage so powerfully expresses, not that we have to see eye to eye, but that we would choose to walk hand in hand. Lord, may our minds and our hearts be forever aligned to yours, listening for that rhythm of life a rhythm to which we dance, a rhythm to which we live, a rhythm that we choose to love. God, I pray that that rhythm will be our legacy for the generations to come. Lord, we celebrate from where we've come and we anticipate what still lies ahead. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Pastor Lloyd, for being here. We really appreciate your service. I'm glad to see so many of you here today and, and welcome the people that are watching this on Channel 16 as well. Let me take a moment to recognize our city council members that, are, that serve us so ably here. We have Gerald Benega, Vernon Brown, Pat Costello, Bob Litz, Bob Jamison, 
and uh, we have several D. Knutson and uh, Kermit Staggers and Kevin Cavanaugh were unable to be here, but they serve us so ably and capably. We thank all of you for the service that you provide to citizens of Sioux Falls. And I want to thank you for being here today as well and for your ongoing support for our city. I would also like to thank my staff, the city directors, and all city employees for their service to Sioux Falls. They are the ones who really help shape our city and make it the place we all love to live in. A lot of U.S. cities would love to be Sioux Falls. While the economy weakens elsewhere, Sioux Falls is experiencing record growth and, in de and development. While other places are experiencing a declining population, Sioux Falls keeps gaining new residents. Fortune magazine recently highlighted our city during a, a story they called Recession Road Trip. The reporter visited a cross-section of American cities to look at how their economies are faring this year. While many are struggling, here's what Fortune had to say about Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls actually has a lot going for it right now. Extremely low unemployment, low cost of living, stable housing market, excellent hospitals, and a growing labor force, just maybe not growing fast enough. This report gives a fitting and accurate picture of our city today. As you'll soon see, we're working to maintain our strong and stable economy, and we're focusing on developing our labor force. Fortunately, our population continues to climb. In 2007, we predicted we would reach 150,000 people. We actually exceeded that number. We ended with 151,300 people calling Sioux Falls home. Recently, we began long-range planning out to the year 2035. By that year, we estimate Sioux Falls will have 271,000 residents. If you combine the city with our four county area, our population will be approximately 400,000 people. New residents require more than housing and more business. We need more business to support them. In 2007, Sioux Falls shattered its record for building construction. The value of our building permits totaled $523 million, beating our previous best year of $463 million. This record total is due to a range of projects in a variety of inter industries. Housing in Sioux Falls is also contrasting, is, is con also contrasting national trends. In 2007, we added more than 17 new house, 1,700 new housing units, better than the last several years. While we may see the market level off sometime in 2008, we're still optimistic that Sioux Falls housing market will avoid the kind of fallout seen elsewhere in the country. Many of those new homes are being built in the northwest part of Sioux Falls. The growth in this part of the city continues to impress with plans for two new Sioux Falls elementary schools, neighborhood parks, and commercial development. This area of the city is also home to the University Center, which will soon take on an expanded role in our community with the completion of two new buildings. With more classroom space and an exciting research park under development, we hope to see more students moving in this fall. On the east side, we're preparing for even more expansion. In 2007, the city opened a new lift station that will eventually allow for 23,000 acres of new development. This significant infrastructure upgrade will position us for growth years into the future. Commercially, we expect Super Target to break ground this year on the east side with more businesses to follow. Residentially, homes are under construction and schools are following. The Brandon School District currently plans two elementary schools within the city of Sioux Falls. And to the south, we continue to see steady growth 
with Journey Out Elementary School in the Harrisburg School District. Our business development is strong too, with two projects coming aboard at 69th and Louise, and we're even looking toward 85th Street. It is equally rewarding to see the strength of our downtown development. With new living units and businesses, our city center is evolving very well. In the last year, we've seen progress on the first phase of Uptown at the Falls Park development with renovated buildings along North Main Avenue. Some businesses are already open here. Others are on the way. And this year, we hope to break ground on North Phillips Avenue where the Arches will offer more downtown living space, offices, retail, and entertainment options. It is also exciting to look at how the East Bank along the Big Sioux River is turning to a great destination all its own. This year, Sharapa Place opened with six stories of occupied office space, occupied office space and a restaurant on the way this summer. Nearby, other new businesses are opening along East A Street that could eventually create an urban entertainment district along our riverfront. One way we help support downtown redevelopment is through our facade easement program. With the council's support, we purchased an easement on the, fa the facades of 15 buildings since we started this initiative in 2001. And we have six more that are underway. As you can see from the before and after shots, this investment significantly improves the appearance of our downtown and preserves the historic nature of our buildings. Our facade easement program is so successful, other cities often ask how to start their own. It is also important to invest in the arts. In 2007, we added these bronze panels to the Gateway Arch at Phillips to the Falls. This year, we'll begin work on a diversity wall on North Phillips Avenue. Our sculpture walk program has grown to attract international artists. And much closer to home, our students have added to the community youth mosaic. Together, we have added artwork that sets Sioux Falls apart. Another unique feature of our city is our River Greenway. The first phase of this project stretches from Falls Park to Fawick. The goal is to bring development closer to the river, allowing people to interact with the waterfront as they dine, shop, and recreate. Going forward, I want to make this project even more of a priority. I believe we're seeing an increased demand from residents for this sort of amenity. And it's the kind of feature that will make Sioux Falls much more attractive to residents and visitors. A key step forward making the river more accessible is relocating railroad tracks out of downtown. With a targeted completion date of 2009, it's important that we make significant progress on this project this year, working with our federal delegation. We're hopeful that our environmental assessment will be approved soon, which allows us to move forward with the design this summer. Ideally, construction would begin later this year. As downtown expands, so does our need for parking. In 2007, we finished a major study on our long-term parking needs. This year, we plan to explore several options for adding parking downtown because we know this need will continue to grow. We also support public transportation through Sioux Falls Transit. We provide service with 11 fixed routes and an express route to Southeast Technical Institute. In 2007, there were 835,000 rides on the fixed route service. Plus, our paratransit service provided over 117 rides, 17,000 rides. Just west of downtown, we're seeing a significant progress in our Pettigrew Heights neighborhood. With a new name and new homes and businesses on the way, 
It's truly rewarding to see the improvements this area is making. Look at the design for projects to come, and you can see what a facelift is ahead for this neighborhood. And importantly, we're continuing our commitment to making housing here affordable. I'd like to thank Citibank for stepping up early this year to help us in this effort. With their $5 million line of credit and an additional grant, we can begin acquiring properties for redevelopment. I'd also like to recognize First National Bank and First Premier Bank for their contributions, including the use of land near First Premier for a community garden. Our Community Development Department has also been involved in Pettigrew Heights, helping to purchase and remove three vacant and dilapidated residential structures from the 10th and Summit area. The lots are being replanted into one parcel and it will be offered for sale for redevelopment in 2008. In addition, in 2007, we completed and sold seven homes through the Neighborhood Revitalization Program. We have two homes under construction and we acquired two other properties that are awaiting construction. These important projects not only provide quality housing, but they eliminate blighted areas and encourage other residents in the neighborhood to keep up their properties as well. In addition, for 2008, the city will be working to develop and increase the supply of affordable single-room occupancy units for low-income men and women in our community. Community Development Single Family Housing Rehabilitation Project is another important program in maintaining our older neighborhoods. This program provides financial assistance to low and moderate income homeowners in the form of low interest and deferred, no interest loans. This helps them maintain their properties in a safe and sanitary condition. In 2007, 36 rehabilitation projects on single family homes were completed. Repairs included furnace replacements, siding replacements, plumbing repairs, electrical system updates, and foundation repairs. The city also offers a home buyer's assistance program where funds are provided for a portion of down payment and closing costs associated with the purchase of a home. This program makes home ownership a possibility for many low-income households. When people use this program to buy a home, they usually buy older homes in our core areas. This is another way to stabilize these neighborhoods. Because people who own their homes are more likely to take pride in where they live and take steps to maintain it. In 2007, nearly $296,000 was loaned to 45 first-time home buyers. The average loan amount was about $6,600. In July of 2007, an incentive was added to the, to the Home Buyers Assistance Program. Home buyers purchasing homes in older core neighborhoods like Pettigrew Heights were eligible to receive additional assistance. Twelve households took advantage of this incentive in 2007. It is also important to recognize that a growing community often faces challenges with its homeless population. In Sioux Falls, I'm proud of the steps we've taken to help our homeless residents improve their lives. In 2007, our Homeless Advisory Board recommended hiring a homeless coordinator and the city and Minnehaha County came together to get it done. We've also been encouraged by the response our faith-based community has had to this issue. In 2008, we'll focus on more long-term housing solutions for homeless, along with support services we know they need. Others in Sioux Falls have taken a great personal interest in where they live and have worked with the city to revitalize their area. I'd like to commend the Whittier neighborhood where residents have really taken initiative. Their cleanup has now become an annual event 
and it's encouraging to see so much neighborhood support behind it. Two other city cleanup projects will target core areas of the city this April. Project NICE is in its 23rd year of cleaning up city neighborhoods. The one selected this year is bounded by South Minnesota Avenue on the east, Southwestern Avenue on the west, West 41st Street on the south, and West 33rd Street on the north. Project Keep is designed to revisit a previous neighborhood cleanup site. This year's area is bounded by Northwestern Avenue on the east, North Kiwanis Avenue on the west, West 15th Street on the south, and West 9th Street on the north. While cleaning up neighborhoods helps preserve them, it is also up to the city to properly maintain infrastructure. This year, we're strengthening our commitment to improving streets in older neighborhoods. This map shows many streets that will be redone this summer. As you can see, many of them are in the central Sioux Falls. We also have a major project planned along 57th Street. As many drivers have noticed, we need to reconstruct a stretch of road between Cliff and Minnesota on 57th Street. We're also expanding the street to include a railroad overpass further east between Cliff and Sycamore Avenues. While these projects will impact traffic for several months, we hope the end result will be well worth it. Further south, we have a project planned to expand 85th Street to five lanes from Minnesota to Western Avenue. This should greatly help to the increased traffic we're seeing in this growth area. And to the west, we need to improve the roadway along West 20th Street, 26th Street between Berkshire Boulevard and Sertoma Avenue. This project will also result in much smoother travel for drivers. In Central Sioux Falls, we're also pleased to have completed an overhaul of our storm drain system. In 2007, we installed this unique underground drainage area at Edison Field. Today, we know residents appreciate the added level of protection these projects bring to their properties. On a larger scale, we're also working with FEMA and the Army Corps of Engineers on revised flood plan maps. In late 2007, FEMA released preliminary maps showing which areas would be at risk during a significant flood. We expect the maps could become more final later this year, requiring more property owners to purchase flood insurance. To bring many property owners out of the floodplain, we're working hard to finish the levy projects around the city. Until now, federal funding has only allowed us to complete small portions each year. But we know our congressional delegation recognizes the importance of this project to Sioux Falls res residents, and they are working hard to find added funding. I'll be traveling to Washington, D.C. to meet with the Corps officials about this project, and we hope to bring a high-ranking member of the Corps to town this summer to, to tour the levy system. I'll also be going to Washington next month to meet with members of Congress regarding funding for Lewis and Clark Regional Water System. As you know, the President proposed no funding for this critical project in the 2009 budget. With the City of Sioux Falls contributing $70 million, this lack of federal participation is unacceptable. I know our Congressional delegation shares this opinion, and we will do all we can to restore as much funding as possible. In the meantime, I am pleased to report that the Lewis and Clark pipeline now reaches inside Sioux Falls city limits. But while that's an important step com toward completing the project, we still need to work toward a fiscally responsible approach in constructing our water treatment plant near Vermilion. We are confident we will deliver water to Sioux Falls by our 2012 target date. 
Good financial management also, also is also important going forward for our city to deal with our growing needs. It's costing more to construct the streets and other infrastructure need, needed for the development and the city needs to do a better job in sharing these costs. For the last year, developers have worked with the city staff to put together a cost-sharing package that we can use to develop new areas going forward. I believe this is a responsible, long-term solution to a challenge that will not go away so long as we continue to grow. I look forward to working with the, with the Council later this year as we look for alternative ways to finance our infrastructure needs. Growth is also important for our public safety, and I'm pleased to report that even as our population grows, Sioux Falls is responding in ways that keep our citizens as safe as ever. In fact, police data shows that in 2007, incidents of homicide, rape, aggravated assault, and burglary all declined. However, after a decrease in 2006, our total number of calls increased. This year, we'll be taking a careful look at our police resources to determine whether we need to make any adjustments. One way the police department is already more actively targeting crime is through our new streets crime unit. This unit has focused on higher crime areas and gang activity. Through their proactive efforts, we've seen a reduction in vandalism and graffiti as well and stronger relationships between police and neighborhood residents. Their work has been especially effective in our Pettigrew Heights neighborhood. We started increasing patrols in this area in mid-2006, and we're now seeing results. For example, in the last quarter of 2006, we had more than 900 police calls in the neighborhood. In the last quarter of 2007, that number dropped to 300. We've also seen significant demand on our Animal Control Division. These officers have benefited from training and upgraded equipment, and they've kept extremely busy. In 2007, they had almost 13,000 calls for service. Sioux Falls Fire Rescue began this year by welcoming back a former leader in Chief Don Hill. I'm pleased he agreed to return to service, and we look forward to helping him develop future leaders at fire rescue. Our fire department saw an increase in calls last year, up 329 from a total of almost 9,000 incidents. But the amount of loss to fire is well below the national average. In 2007, our fire loss totaled about 2.2 million dollars. Nationally, numbers indicate fire loss for a city our size is nearly five million dollars. One major project in 2008 will be the reconstruction of Fire Station 5 on the city's east side. We will be replacing an outdated building with a modern fire station designed to help us respond to a range of emergencies. It should look similar to our, new fire, to our new Station 10 on the west side. This new station will improve response times for east side residents, and we look forward to opening it next year. Fire Rescue will also strive to earn national accreditation in 2008. We first earned this distinction in 2003. Accreditation ensures that our department meets a standard of excellence in emergency response, fire prevention, and future planning. To give you an idea of the significance of this, there are 32,000 fire departments in the United States, and less than 200 are accredited. Another way the city keeps residents safe is through health inspections. As Sioux Falls grows, we add many new facilities that need to be monitored. In 2007, we performed a record 6,400
466 inspections. Our mosquito control efforts also continue to be a success. We, then, we cooperate with Minnehaha and Lincoln counties. And this past season, in spite of almost a 100% increase in West Nile cases statewide, Sioux Falls actually saw a decrease. But the highlight of 2007 was the opening of our new Siouxland Health and Human Service Center. It is located in the new renovated Coliseum area, and this project has been a great partnership with the uh, Minnehaha County Commissioners and the, and the City Council of Sioux Falls and the Multicultural Center. Our new space will allow more patients to receive income-adjusted medical and dental care at the Community Health Center. In 2007, we saw more than 27,000 patient visits. Patients tell us they truly appreciate this renovated space and we've seen the difference it makes in our number of no-show appointments. Our next major building project involves our downtown main library. These images give you an idea how this renovation will look when it's completed. As you can see, the changes will give this building a much needed updated look. Inside, the library will become more user friendly and include features like comfortable reading rooms, sculpture garden, and cafe. Look for a groundbreaking on this project very soon. Construction will go on throughout this year and next year, and with it, we plan to reopen it in 2010. The library will be open during the entire project, so I encourage visitors to keep stopping by to check on the progress. We have had many people take advantage of programs and services our library system offers in this last year. Our total circulation of materials increased by 3%. And we had especially strong growth in computer and database use. Recently, we began making books available online for library cardholders to download onto MP3 players and other such devices. This new service is being well used so I expect we'll continue to see more growth in this area. We've also seen record interest in our city recreational trail. In 2007, we paved the last piece of a 20-mile loop around the city, thanks to an infusion of federal funding, nearly two miles of hard surface trail will be constructed along Skunk Creek between Dunham Park and Legacy Park. We've also stepped up our repair and replacement program on the trail and are making plans to expand it to more outlying areas in Sioux Falls. With a growing interest in cycling and healthy lifestyles, we continue to look for ways to make our city more bike friendly. People clearly are taking advantage of what our Parks and Rec Department has to offer. In 2007, nearly 2.5 million people attended a parks and recreation event or were participants in a program or service. Our park system also continues to evolve with new and improved parks. This year, we'll focus on upgrades at McKinnon Park as we prepare to celebrate its 100-year anniversary in our city. These will include expansions to the formal gardens, new walks, and landscape improvements. In 2007, we also finished work on the Spencer Dog Park, our first permanent off-leash dog park that's proving to be extremely popular. And this year, we'll work on new neighborhood parks, Thielen and Green Hills Park in the Northwest Sioux Falls, and we'll also finish Harmonon Park, our newest regional park, that will provide eight additional softball fields on our east side. We're also looking ahead to swim season. In 2007, we opened the new Pioneer Spray Pool. It received five times as many visitors as the old waiting pool, bringing people from all over the city to one of our core neighborhoods. This year, We'll finish design and start construction on a replacement for Drake Springs Pool at Nelson Park. 
The new pool will include a lazy river and new interactive play features and will open next swim season. More changes are underway at the Great Plains Zoo. With a new master plan that we have in place, we expect to see some exciting improvements. Visitors this season will enjoy major changes to the Asian cat exhibit that will upgrade the experience for them and the animals. The new chamber appeals projects to raise funding to help build our park system were approved earlier this year. The Mary Jo Wagner Arboretum was approved for the 2009 campaign and the Great Plains Zoo and Dalbridge Museum was awarded the 2010 slot demonstrating the private sector's commitment to help improve our quality of life in Sioux Falls. Our park system also benefits from other generous donations. In the last year, we're grateful for contributions to help fund a miracle field for children of all ages with special needs. At Terrace Park, the unique landscape feature of an island was constructed in Cove Lake near the Japanese Garden. At Falls Park, a children's sculpture garden will be constructed near the horse barn. Also, thanks to a major gift from the Elman Family Foundation in honor of Jim Elman, we will be constructing a new trailhead this summer along Big Sioux River near West 12th Street. This will be the first of its kind in Sioux Falls and will service one of our most popular quality of life amenities, the River Greenway. Finally, we've seen a wonderful response at Veterans Memorial Park from individual paver donations to work on a special going home tribute sculpture. In 2008, I'd like our city to help build a stronger connection between city government and the residents we serve. Starting today, you'll find a new section on our website. It's called Sioux Falls at Your Service. You can reach this site through SiouxFalls.org. On it, you'll find links to a variety of services we provide our customers, from online snow alerts to restaurant inspections to information about park programs and links to library services. You'll also be easily connected to departments that can answer questions or address complaints. And there are many new additions planned for Sioux Falls at your service later this year. So expect to hear more about this soon. Customer service truly is our core mission, and we are always trying to improve it. Another way we connect with citizens is through our cable channel. Channel 16. From the renovated studio at the Orpheum Theater Center, our staff has produced wonderful programs about what our city has to offer. I recently began a monthly show called Ask the Mayor, where citizens write in with their questions and we choose as many as we can answer. I would encourage anyone to send us a question through SiouxFalls.org. In 2007, I also announced an initiative focusing on young professionals. Studies show that increasingly young workers choose where they want to live and then find a job in that city. As baby boomers retire, the workforce shrinks. Cities need to be increasingly competitive by attracting new young workers. By working with community leaders, and the young workers, they've helped us identify, and I'm hopeful we can make Sioux Falls more attractive to this important demographic. Through this initiative, we've been meeting with many groups of young workers. Soon we hope to report back on what they've been telling us. We also, we'll also be bringing some ideas for what we can do to help Sioux Falls become more appealing to these workers. But I'd like to give you a short preview. In general, young workers are telling us Sioux Falls is heading in a positive direction. They like how we're a growing city that is safe and clean. It's a great place for them to live. They're very interested in the downtown development and outdoor recreation opportunities. 
And they want to see more young workers move here because they know that will attract more job opportunities. Young workers also tend to value diversity, which I think is really important to recognize as the city tries to encourage this quality in our community. We recently partnered with the Sioux Falls School District and a, with, and a wide range of community organizations to form a diversity council. I'm very optimistic about what this group can help bring to our city. We're committed to exploring opportunities and challenges related to diversity. And I know we brought leaders together who can make a positive change happen. Bringing people together to make change is a common theme in our community. And one you can see in a project that we got started late last year. As you know, Sioux Falls needs an enlarged arena for major events like concerts and tournaments. When a group of business leaders came to me proposing a new, uh, to build a new facility on the site of Harwood Field, I thought it was an idea definitely worth exploring. With the help of the school district and the sports authority, I hope we can spend the next year talking as a community about our future needs and that we can arrive at a consensus for how we'd like to pursue a new facility. To be successful, we need the public to become involved. So I encourage all of our citizens to take advantage of the opportunities we will offer them for their input. That kind of positive approach to developing a community, it would cause these major companies to choose to locate here. Recently, we were excited to learn that Verisun Energy will be moving its corporate headquarters to Sioux Falls. This company will help make our city a center for renewable fuels industry and bring high quality jobs to our community. In interviews, the company chairman and CEO said reasons for the decisions included the ability to retain employees and the cost of doing business. He said, in the end, we felt Sioux Falls was the best place of all locations for the company. It's not just major business, businesses, but individuals that find Sioux Falls a wonderful place to live. Next month, we'll release the results of our first ever citizen survey. This will help us learn what citizens believe we're doing well and what changes we should consider making. While the, the, the sample was scientific, we also gave people a chance to fill out a survey online. And I'd like to share a small, small sample of the online survey with you. Our final question asked residents, what is the primary reason you live in Sioux Falls? As you'd expect, we got a range of responses, many involving jobs and families. But here are a few I think you'll especially appreciate. One person wrote, it's a clean and vibrant community. I like being part of a community that is growing and evolving rather than one that is stagnant. Another wrote, the local economy provides opportunities within a safe and comfortably sized community. And the third wrote, great economy, good people, good infrastructure. Sioux Falls is home. Sioux Falls is home to all of us. And it's a home that we should be proud of. As mayor, I am honored to lead this great city. And I just know that our best days are still ahead. And thank you very much for coming and listening today. We're adjourned.